Welcome to India Sports Biz Talks. Today we have with us Mr. Joy Bhattacharya, Vice President of Baseline Ventures India Private Limited, a sports marketing, entertainment and brand licensing company. Over his career, he's delivered one of the most successful junior events in the history of FIFA, worked with the IPL from its first season and was part of two championships with the Kolkata Knight Riders as their team director. Today, we'll be speaking to him to unpack the Indian sports business ecosystem from a macro and a micro perspective. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the podcast, Joy. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much. Pleasure being here. Pleasure to have you. I want to start with the first question uh, and dive into your background a little bit. Of course, everybody in the sports, Indian sports ecosystem knows of you. A lot of people kind of have these convoluted ideas about what they need to get into the sports industry, whether they need to be an athlete or certain skill sets that they need. And you have a background in math and computer science. That's what you graduated with. Uh, So how did you utilize those skills and take them and convert them into the business side of sports? I think they, they were very useful because, you know, when you came into sport and sport is, was and still is to a very large extent, a cottage industry. You know, it wasn't an industry, you know, it was your friends and athletes and people who liked athletes or former athletes who became managers. And all, and all that needed for sport to grow to the next level is need people who can think logically, who can, you know, plan ahead, who can look at things like that. And in all that, I think a background in any kind of an engineering or a science does help because it helps you structure things. It helps you say that, you know what, this is what it looks like in 2012. But, you know, in five years time, this could be very different. Or, you know, online could be very different. So I think having, a, and I, I, I actually, I won't even say that I'll stop it at an education in science or mathematics. I'd say having an education, having a certain amount of academic rigor gives you the ability to look in the future and look at things and look at things will change in the future and gives you the ability to at least plan for it. That doesn't mean that necessarily it will happen the same way. But you have that ability to say, you know what, I'm sitting this year, I really need for this sport to understand what's going to happen nine years, ten years later. How could this develop? And I, I think having an academic background of some sort is really useful there. Right. So do you recommend students or those trying to make a transition to specialize in something like sports or they should rather open themselves up to, like you said, um, more of an academic rigor and develop those kind of skills? I think, I think uh, there's no easy answer to that, but uh, I generally tend to believe that uh, a bit more you study, the more you get exposed, study and exposure. I mean, these are two things and exposure is also very important. I mean, I tell people all the time that, you know, they say, you know, it's an unpaid gig. I said, the kind of exposure in a real life situation as opposed to a situation which is on paper, there's a heaven and hell difference. So I always tell people, exposure, education, reading, I mean, those are the kind of things that, and you'll be surprised at how often there's information available, which people just don't bother to get around to reading because, you know, they haven't done it. There is so much, I mean, the, the level of resources lying around in the net in other places today is unimaginable 20 years, 25 years ago. So, I mean, there's no excuse today, for example, for going to an interview and not being prepared or not being aware of what to do. Fair enough. I think that's completely on point. For an outsider looking in or for the uninitiated, how would you specifically unpack the Indian sports ecosystem? There is is just so much around it, but how would you specifically unpack those three words? Very simple. I think it's extremely complicated and I tell people that you need to start from the very beginning. You need to understand where we came from. We came from basically a colonial structure where the colonial troops and the administrators thought it was a good idea to introduce games to keep the natives busy. And that's where it started off from. And it's not. There was some. That didn't mean that the people who ran it were necessarily thinking about it as keeping the natives you know, busy. I mean, a lot of them really loved the sport and were a part of it. But the idea was to have sport as something that, you know, uh, was very simply to, you know, it was a distraction. It was more of a side event. And then after 47, when we became an independent country, there was very, very few people who were there to run it. The only people who had the time and ability was the Maharajas and the old princely states. And if you see, that's why even if you look today, all the Indian... uh, the Ranji Trophy, the Santosh Trophy, they're all named after former Maharajas, former this thing. And some sports still are dominated by that. I mean, you look at shooting, you look at some of those sports. So what 
what it happened was that you know you gave gave it somewhere which was a uh, something the british gave to something maharaja's land to something uh, after that the politicians and bureaucrats took over and only in 2008 with the ipl and what's happening there are you seeing the professionalization of indian sports you know people who actually understand sport know sport or work in sport have getting into it so i think that's the thing that really the the sort of even the free market hasn't worked on sport really till 2008 it's only now that you're seeing the free market emerging so when people say that indian sport is so much to go i said that you know they've done quite a lot in 10 12 years i mean there's a lot to go and there's a lot of issues but quite a lot has happened in the last 12 years makes sense so the commercial side of sports in india has been rising at a rapid pace um so many changes that have happened already uh but still somewhere cricket or with the ipl or in general holds a very high sentimental value and its reach is sort of indomitable where do you think other sports are lacking in terms of getting a larger share of that pie so for starters if you see it, let's take the ipl i think it's a good place to start it's the best cricket in the world now whether you like it don't like it no other sport they you know the indian football league the ipl is a decent league they're trying hard but they're not even the best top 5 football leagues in asia here you have the best sportsmen in that particular sport in the world coming here and while at one point you turn on and say that yeah it's played by such so few countries but you know those countries are also about 2 billion people among those countries that you have that are playing and t20 is making sure a lot of other people are coming in if you see nepalese players today there's a player from the us in the ipl that's also happening the t20 the 3 hour format is really opening it up so that's why cricket has done so well because it's a therapeutic sport now for other sports to do well they have to say they have to take the good lessons from the ipl but not try and become the ipl because you're not going to become the ipl cricket is so far ahead from the you know in the late 70s cricket and hockey were almost parallel and then the atc world cup happened and they, you know hockey, hockey cricket just took off and hockey just went downwards and that is the one thing that's happened that never never i mean that changed the way the sport is looked at and i think that's the thing that sports have to turn around and say that you know you got a very good example of how to use a free market and how to actually uh, harness commercial things but the numbers we harness we've got to be realistic about it we cannot think of using the ipl as a base for numbers if you had to place your bet on another sport that can sort of perhaps in the next few years once a grassroots or a framework has been built match the love that cricket shares in the nation what would that be i actually look i think football is going to do well because we are a resource starved country you know we are a country which has very few resources therefore football naturally grows and when people tell me that football is only good the european nations play football and you know it's it's a rich man's sport because you know you need facilities i tell them to look at you know 10 world champions have come from brazil and Argentina and Uruguay and people like Ronaldinho and Pele grew up playing the sum so i think football is going to grow definitely there's no doubt about it it is the global sport now whether we like it or we don't like it it's a de facto global sport and the other thing that i think will grow is between volleyball and basketball because team sports tend to do well and these i genuinely believe i genuinely genuinely believe that sports that look good on tv always or on ott platform on the screen have a better chance and i think that's where it is i mean i I do see tennis growing but the problem with tennis is that right now there's no recognizable star and I think that's a huge problem for the sport. Badminton is growing really well and I think it will do well but again solo sports will have attract only so many people because finally it's a solo sport. What is your take on the current pace at which the infrastructure and grassroots development for sports in India is going? I I think it it was going okay and I think 2020 is you know what's happened in the last 6 to 8 months has been a huge huge setback that set us back by 3 or 5 years i think the governments are aware what what is encouraging to me is that uh, remember that in india that uh, we have state subjects and central subjects and in many way in sports is a state subject it means the state responsibility is not center so what happens is the result is a lot of states are now taking initiatives themselves and you know odisha is a very good example which is leading the way goa is trying to you know really establish itself as a hub for sport so i think what's happening is that the state level states are trying to open up infrastructure do things and say that sport is something that can be made a hub of and i think that's something that's encouraging 
of course this 2000 this uh, and pandemic has set things back three four years and that's going to be very difficult to come back mm. of course uh, these are very specific factors that are extremely important from both a macro and micro perspective in sports but when we just talk about culture in general for sports in india especially from an athletic perspective uh, the the sentiment that drives or underpins everything for sports in india is uh, the philosophy of kheloge khudoge banoge kharab so do you think that culture still plays a role in harnessing uh, the talent in india or or rather not harnessing it look i think i think that that hangover will always be there because you know as a middle class country we were told that you play that that's really a problem and you need to study and become an engineer or doctor or an architect or a, you know very few professions that were even thought to be decent or legitimate yeah. but if you look back at it i think that's that's a very it is true but it's a very middle class perspective it's the kind of perspective you and i have grown to but a lot of people these especially people you know from more underprivileged societies sport is a way of getting out sport is a way of you know getting a government job you know sport is a way of moving forward so that has always been there it's just that our filtration talent filtration our ability has not just ever been good enough to spot all the kids we have and our coaching has been rubbish and most federations are extremely corrupt and power hungry and they make and they make very bad decisions on behalf of uh, the players but there is talent in india and i think that middle class problem remains and will remain sports will never give you security as for an athlete also getting security out of playing sport is very difficult it is inherently an insecure thing not just in india but around the world i mean it's very difficult to make it as a professional athlete compared to the number of people who start playing sport I definitely want to talk more about the pandemic since it's hit different countries and different people in so many different ways and you touched upon how and and that's natural uh, but do you think India as a sporting nation has taken a larger hit um, and where do you see the silver lining amidst all this I think uh, as a sporting nation we have taken a very large hit we've taken a really large hit because uh, we are so close to the edge you see indian the ecosystem of indian sport is very close to the edge and people like caddy people like you know groundsmen they live literally day to day month to month on tips and stuff like that so every one time three months off they are actually falling off that cliff they're going back to their villages they can't stay as groundsmen or caddy so that's why it's hit us harder than others because we have no reserves secondly we have a huge unorganized sector which when this pandemic hit nobody wanted to take care of and i think you know that's a small things that you know go sport foundation is trying to put together trying to you know put together play for india trying to get people to say that you know what we need to support these communities this this loss is is replaceable in the long term you know every experienced groundsman who's going away or caddy who's going away or any other support person going away they're not coming back for them to come back from their villages come here and for us to regain they're losing invaluable experience and understanding and we can't do very much about it so there's a lot of this has hit us harder than other people have this simply because we have less resources our staff our people are closer to the edge we don't have a parachute so i mean it it is in many ways people are trying and i have to say i mean other than go sports foundation lots of great individual efforts but it's individuals it's not i don't see federations coming forward and really making plans to really help people i mean the only people who have come forward is the bcci because they are rich enough and they are able enough do you see a silver lining in terms of at least on the commercial side reevaluate business models or how things are going to pan out in the future i think it's good i think it's going to happen because you know we will have to reevaluate business models that's not a bad thing at all i think a lot of indian sport is overpaid a lot of it is underpaid and i think all this is going to sort out I also think esports are going to explode over the next 4 5 years in India it's, it's a huge market and I think uh, it's uh, you know whether you have a skill at hitting a ball or whether you have a skill at manipulating a curse I don't think one is in any way innately a superior skill to the other so I think esports deserve their place in the sun and I hope over the next 3 4 years you will get it but uh, look whether it is or not good good or not good for Indian sport we have to see what we can do out of it you know the reality is this is pandemic has happened we can't wish it away so now we got to turn around and say you know how do we make this work for us and i think that's the really important would you have any parting advice for those young professionals executives looking to enter the industry um, and how to maneuver this and mimic a career like yours no i think i think my career is a lot of luck i have to say luck but luck has a part to play in almost everybody's career all i'll say is 
get in there. I think one of the things that uh, we used to do when we when I was uh, project director of the FIFA Under-17 World Cup, uh, you know, we were fine with dissent. Dissent was okay. People could talk back. People could give their opinion. The only thing we said, and Javier and me as a rule said, the one thing that you do not say when you're in sport is, this is not my job. Everything is your job. Whatever is needed to make an event a success is your job. I have inspected bathrooms. I have cleaned pitches. Javier has done the same. Everyone's done the same. You need to be able to get your hands dirty, get out of that mentality of saying, this is not my job. And I think one, if you do that and you accept that, you know, whatever it is there, I'll do it cheerfully and I'll do anything that it takes to make my event a success. I think those are the words I'd live by if I had to look at it back again. That's super motivating advice. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I really appreciate your time and it was a pleasure to have you on the show and share all your knowledge. Thank you. It's a pleasure being there. Thank you so very much. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Please don't be afraid to reach out and let me know what else and who else you want to listen to next. Also, if you did enjoy this interview, please don't forget to subscribe and rate the podcast India Sports Biz Talks through your desired podcasting platform. Thank you and until next time, keep the Josh high.